Today on Ham Radio Q&A, we're going to look at the Chameleon m 2.0 Modular Portable Antenna System. So please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, uh, Chameleon Antennas recently updated their modular portable antenna system, or MPAS, with the goal of it being the most versatile, high-performance, and rugged HF antenna system on the market. And I think they've really hit, this, hit the mark with the MPAS 2.0. The MPAS is no one antenna, but it's really several rolled up into one modular system. Uh, this building block approach really makes it flexible as you can um, pick and choose which components you want, you know, whether you're looking for a vertical antenna or a horizontal antenna, an Envis antenna, or something um, with a lower takeoff angle for DX contacts. It's really everything that you would want in a portable antenna system rolled up into one nice kit. So let's take a look at the Chameleon MPAS 2.0. Um, and really the core of the kit is their Hybrid Micro 2.0. Uh, this is a 5 to 1 transformer that allows for broadband uh, antenna tuning between 1.8 and 54 megahertz when you use an external antenna tuner. Uh, other components are, consists of, you get 73 feet of, of wire. Uh, there's a wire terminal on one end. Uh, they, they I add these um, captive rings, um, insulating rings on, on the other end and in the middle um, to aid in deployment. Uh, it also comes with uh, 25 feet of counterpoise wire. Um, both of these are on a nice uh, line winder. Uh, the Mill Whip 2.0, it's uh, 9 feet 4 uh, inches uh, long when uh, fully deployed. It's constructed out of brass and with a, a bungee in the middle. And then also the uh, mill whip extender. This is 8 feet um, 9 inches long when deployed and uh, the, these two units can be combined to give you a whip that is a little bit over 18 feet tall. Um, and then the ground spike. Um, stainless steel with a screw connector and um, another screw to attach the counterpoise. This is really nice heavy duty um, spike yeah, so you can uh, ground mount uh, the hybrid micro and the um, and the whips and then finally uh, you get 50 feet of coax uh, this is RJ58 um, PL259 connectors on each end and a, a ferrite um, attached uh, near the feed point uh, to help um, eliminate some of that um, that common mode interference, uh, the RF energy returning back down the feed line. You know, not really included with the package, um, but um, what was really helpful is, is some other accessories you might want to add. Um, yeah, you can add some rope. Um, I got a couple 30 foot pieces of um, paracord here um, if you, to aid in deployment if you want to use it as a um, wire antenna. Uh, a multi-tool or a little adjustable wrench. Uh, these connectors are supposed to be um, finger tight, but sometimes they do tend to snug up a little bit, so the multi-tool or, or a little um, wrench will help in, um, in disassembling uh, the, the product easily. Um, of course, a mallet or something to uh, pound this, the spike in. Uh, they recommend using a plastic or rubber mallet or maybe a piece of wood and pound onto that so you don't bend or deform uh, the, the screw here. And then finally, you're also going to need a, um, a wide-ranging antenna tuner uh, to use this antenna. Now, in most uh, circumstances, uh, the SWR uh, between uh, the 80 meter and the 10 meter band is going to be under 3 to 1. So if you've got a um, built-in tuner in your rig, uh, should work. That, that auto tuner should work quite well uh, with this antenna system. Otherwise, an external tuner is, is really required. Although, um, I have found that this antenna is resonant on the 20 meter band, so um, you get good, um, a very good resonance there, but on the lower bands, a tuner is almost necessary. Now, one thing I really do recommend is you do read the instruction manual before you begin using the um, 
the MPAS 2.0. Uh, the 24 page uh, instruction manual is concise and very well written, but it has lots of tips and um, instructions on how to use the antenna effectively, plus different methods of deployment. Uh, you could use it in a, like I said, in a vertical configuration uh, with these whips. Uh, you can use it in a horizontal configuration with the whips actually too, or a horizontal configuration uh, with the um, with the 75 feet of, of wire here um, as a dipole or an NFED antenna, um, an inverted V. Um, you can combine multiple um, lengths of this wire and, and use it as a, as a loop antenna. So there's a lot of different configurations here uh, to really meet your particular needs and what your communication goals are. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put it in the um, vertical configuration and uh, we're going to test it out uh, that way on 40 meters, possibly 20. Uh, today, see how it works, see if we can make a few contacts get it on the air. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Uh, okay, the Bravo Romeo station, the Bravo Romeo station, over. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Echo Bravo K4. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo, thank you. Yeah, you're, uh, once we get uh, through the QRM, you're 5-9 uh, in, uh, uh, in Kansas City, over. Roger, Roger, the 5 9 in Kansas City. You're 5 9 into um, north central Wisconsin, Whiskey, India. I'm also at a state park, uh, K1473, uh, Rib Mountain State Park in Wisconsin. Uh, over. Roger, Roger, thank you. The fuel uh, station that we're on right now is a remote transmitter and not located at the uh, National World War I Museum. So it's uh, this particular station is not eligible for park credit. However, we do have two other stations on the air, and uh, those are physically located here at the park. Over. Roger that. Fine business. Well, it's a good day to make the contact. Um, sounds like you got a little bit of a pile up there, so we'll let you go back um, to it. Uh, this is uh, Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo. Over. Okay, okay. Victor Bravo Romeo, 7-3, and I appreciate the QSO. This is WW1USA. QRZ, please, over. So wrapping up with the uh, Chameleon Impasse 2.0 um, modular portable antenna system. There's some good and bad things about it. Some things I really like and some things I don't. Um, as for the good, um, I really like its versatility. Uh, you, you get all of these components that you can put together in a, a wide variety of configurations. If you want a vertical, if you want something horizontal, um, N-fed, or dipole style antenna, even a man pack portable option, that's one of the things you can, you can do with uh, this antenna. So it's really neat that you can um, have so many um, versatile options to do with it. Uh, build quality is excellent. Uh, everything, um, all of the pieces are high quality components. There's a lot of care that, that goes into um, you know, the, the construction and, um, and design of these um, uh, antenna components and that, that really shows in its build quality. And also, you know, the entire setup is very compact and lightweight. Uh, so if you are looking for a field antenna, you can, um, uh, you know, pick and choose the pieces you, you, you want for a real lightweight setup. Uh, the hybrid micro transformer is, it's probably the heaviest piece. Well, that, the spike is, is pretty heavy too, so it's all stainless steel. Um, but the hybrid micro is, um, you know, a little over a pound in weight. 
Um, so, you know, let that be your guide if you are looking for, you know, really a backpacking antenna setup. And now the bad. Uh, one of the things I, I found in using the antenna a few times is that bolt on the top isn't quite long enough. Um, you know, so if you want to use it in sort of a wire antenna configuration, it's not, um, and, and you get the nuts in there and it's, it just doesn't, um, it could be just a little bit longer so it's not quite so finicky in setting it up in that configuration. And then I think the second thing is um, power rating is just a little bit low with this antenna. Uh, it's rated for a uh, full duty cycle, so that'd be CW, AM, and data modes at 50 watts, and um, intermittent duty cycle like sideband at 100 watts, um, which is fine if you're working QRP um, feel or, or in the field. Uh, but if you really want to go barefoot, you're not going to do it with data. Uh, you're not going to run 100 watts FT8 with this antenna. Um, you're going to want to scale that down to 50 watts. I'd like to see just a little bit more of a comfort window, especially uh, with an antenna of this um, this quality and, and at this price point. And, and then and finally, price point. We got to we got to talk a little bit about that. You know, and I think the the, the markets that Chameleon is really uh, targeting with this antenna is um, uh, government, non-governmental bodies, uh, the military. Um, feel, people that are in the field and need a rel reliable antenna system and that price point really shows. Um, but also, you know, for the amateur radio market, um, survivalists, uh, preppers, uh, outdoor enthusiasts, um, you know, it's, it, it's really, I, I think this antenna is really worth the investment. And um, I would seriously consider investing in an antenna system like this, especially when I can get all of the, the components, the pieces, parts for this, this large modular system at one price. Um, it makes for a really good deal. So that's my thoughts on the Chameleon uh, MPASS uh, 2.0 modular portable antenna system. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Please leave them below. I'd love to hear them. And um, certainly we'll follow up with them in a, in a future video. And also, I'll, I'll, in some future videos too, we'll, 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 we'll try some of the other deployments uh, of the antenna in the, in the horizontal configuration so you can kind of see um, what all it does in the in the different in, in the different um, methods of installing it for more articles and information be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos so if you like this video give me that big thumbs up uh, check out some of the other recommended videos whatever alongside me here and um, if you haven't already done so don't forget to hit that subscribe button pressing subscribe will notify you when future videos are released and that's it for this time I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.